Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hey, hey, hello, my name is Lauren. I am beyond excited to share with you guys today's video. I will be doing kind of an unboxing, not gonna lie, I have already opened it and like done the hard part because I had to transfer my old phone over. So I've kind of already done that. I want to take you guys with me on setting up my new iPhone 13 Pro Max. Not only that, but I'm gonna be sharing with you guys some of the new features on this phone and comparing comparing them to both my 12 Pro Max and my 11 Pro Max. Yes, I have all three of them with me today and I did tons of video and photo tests for you guys. So if you're considering getting the new iPhone 13 Pro Max, you can make your best educated decision. Let's go ahead and jump on into it. I ended up getting the Sierra Blue iPhone 13 Pro Max. I love this color. I didn't go with the gold one because I actually had the 12 Pro Max in the gold. And if you're not familiar with the new iPhone, it really really looks similar to the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Really the only difference is the new cinematic video feature that the camera is slightly better. And for a person who is a full-time content creator like myself, literally making TikToks like every single day, having the most up-to-date device is really important for me. Now, these new iPhone boxes, they are super duper slim and they come with like nothing in them. So be forewarned. You do get your usual charging cord and then your little instructions and things like that information about your phone. You do only get the lightning bolt charger if I'm not wrong. You do not get the charging block. So you will need to buy the charging block separate because they do not come in this. I did go ahead and purchase an extra one just to go with this anyways. Which brings me to the accessories that I ended up buying for the new phone which like I mentioned of course is the charging block. So this one's special. It's not a USB plug-in like your old chargers will be. So keep that in mind if you are thinking about using an old block it does not have a usb end on it it does have that um special lightning bolt one so you do have to buy a special one for this i just got mine on amazon you can buy them in apple i'll link it down below if you want to go and check it out i also decided to get a new phone case because yes i am one of those clumsy people who drops their phone i ended up getting um this clear case from amazon i also have another one coming in in like a really pretty neutral stone color this one's supposed to be like military gray drop honestly it was like under 15 dollars. so if you want something quick and in expensive this is a great way to go especially if you also are a fan of the color of the back of your phone that's why I got a clear one because I actually really like this blue and I wanted it to show through on my case but I also still wanted it to be protected of course I just I drop things and I don't want my brand new phone to get completely shattered now I am gonna be setting up my new phone with you guys so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my little screen recording over here on the side so that you guys can follow along I just have a few new aesthetic things that I want to start, that I want to do on my phone. And I'm gonna bring you guys along with that. Starting off on my little homepage here, there are a couple of things that I have added and some things I wanna share with you guys and all that kind of stuff, some things I wanna change. I will be doing a what's on my iPhone 13 Pro Max video after this one, so make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss that video. I want to change a couple of these different things. So I have my master to-do list from Notion, my countdown to our moving day, a flip clock, and then this little Pinterest photo thing, and I want to update my background photo. Um, now you'll see in my photos here, I'm going to skip because I have a ton of different random things. This is the photo that I want to use in my background. It is very fallish and I want to make it my wallpaper for both my lock screen and my home screen. So I'm gonna set it for both. And now we have a beautiful little fall background. I like how it's white on the top, like little cloudy where my apps are, my little folders, and then the trees are on the bottom. It looks great. I want to keep these four little widgets here because I visit my master to-do list a lot and I'm moving in 24 days. So of course I want to keep myself updated, but I do want to change this as well. So I'm actually going to change it to this. Let me just make sure. Maybe I want to update the color. Maybe I'll add a little filter just to make it stand out a bit more. And now it kind of flows with those trees a little better. I like how it blends in a bit more. 
very folly. Now this Pinterest one is actually a Pinterest board that I have that is like fall inspired. Um, so this picture changes every hour. Right now it just happens to be on one that's not that aesthetically pleasing, but we'll just ignore it for now because that does change. And I really like my little flip clock widget as well. So I'm going to leave that there and I'm very happy with how this now looks. So now I have kind of updated things a little bit more. I have already gone through and deleted any apps that are not really essential to me so that I could clean up my home screen. I also end up using the feature remove from home screen. So the apps are technically still on my phone, but I can go in and actually use them if I still need to, but they're not clogging up my home screen. I really like using that feature so that again, my screens are not going to be crowded. I really like things that are clutter free and I try to only keep the apps on there that I am using very frequently or often because those are the ones that I just use all the time and need to have them ready available. Now that my phone is all nicely set up, let's talk a little bit about the difference between the new iPhone 13 Pro Max, the iPhone 12 Pro Max, and the iPhone 11 Pro Max. So as mentioned, yes, I do have all three of these guys and they have been great phones to me. And I wanna talk about mostly the camera settings on these as well as some other small things that you might know notice if you are upgrading or some things that you might want to know. The first thing that I noticed about the new iPhone is that the speaker on the front of the phone is actually higher up and your screen definitely fills out in that camera section more. This is the iPhone 13 Pro Max and this is the iPhone 12 Pro Max. You'll notice that the little black bar is smaller on the new phone so you do have more space on your screen for you which is really nice that they have added that feature. It just looks a lot more aesthetically pleasing while you're scrolling which is really cool. Another thing you will also notice as you are using your new phone is that the search bar when you're on the Safari app is actually going to be down here at the bottom of the phone instead of at the top like you'll see here on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. This I believe is so that it's easier for you to reach this with your fingers and click on it so that you can change it and type whatever it is that you're searching for. I have honestly found that to be really useful so far. The speaker that is on the top of the new iPhone is also slightly larger than the one on the iPhone 12 Pro Max as well as the one on the 11 Pro Max. The one on the 11 Pro Max is the same as the 12 Pro Max. A big difference between the 11 Pro Max and the two newer iPhones is of course that this one is rounded, whereas the new ones are squared. So the sides are flat, whereas these ones are rounded on the edges. And you'll also notice that the camera lenses are incredibly different in sizes from the 11 Pro Max to the new 13 Pro Max. You'll also see a big jump in size from the 12 Pro Max to the 13 Pro Max as well. And that is because the cameras, of course, are getting better and that allows for the new cinematic video feature. One of the biggest things that I first noticed from the new iPhone 13 Pro Max was also the glitching or lack of glitching that you notice when you swipe between your different screens. So this was something that I noticed right away is that there was no longer that feeling that your apps were kind of lagging as you dragged your screen across. It is actually very clear and very sharp, which I personally love. I think it's definitely something that you notice right away. Now jumping into the cameras, I wanted to share with you guys the difference between the photos as well as the videos and the new cinematic video feature. So first let's talk about the just plain old video feature. This is where I did a test for you guys. I'll show all three right here on the screen for you. So you guys can see all of them lined up next to each other. I have all of these on the same video setting so that you can really see the difference between the three of them. Honestly, I didn't see a huge upgrade as far as this regular camera goes, but I think it is a little bit noticeable sometimes when you put them all side by side. Honestly, I just think that the video quality is continuing to get better and better. And as I was filming some of these, I was like, oh my gosh, like these look just as nice as some of the cameras that I've had in the past that I used to film my YouTube videos. The new iPhone 13 Pro Max also allows you to zoom into 3X, whereas the previous ones are 2.5 and two. 
So this is a really nice feature, especially if you're someone, again, who's trying to get more of those macro close-up styled shots. This is a really great way to get a clear image and just allow you to really get in on those details. You'll also notice that the new phone is a lot better at picking up on adjusting to change of focus. So auto focusing to whatever the new subject is. I found that it did that a lot faster and more efficiently. And I noticed that was a big difference between this phone and the old ones. Now on to the cinematic video shot. I honestly was a little bit disappointed at the quality of this. It definitely reminded me of when the first iPhones came out with the cinematic or portrait style photos. It was still in the works and I found that a lot of the um, blurriness around the edges was not very defined as I was kind of hoping that they would be. I find that this also looks better the further you are away from the subject, whereas if you're really close up to it and trying to use this feature, it's a lot harder to do. And I found that it worked better with certain objects rather than say people, for example. So definitely keep that in mind if you are looking to purchase just because of that feature. I did a video test here of showing you guys basically a selfie video of me so that you could see the blurry background and kind of what that look is and all of those types of things. Now, now you are able to adjust your depth of field when it comes to the cinematic shot. So if you want, you can set it to something that is not as blurry in the background. And I found that that definitely helped some of that um, issue with the outlining of the subject. So turning that down a little bit while still giving you somewhat of a blurry background also allows you to define more of your subject around the outside edges. Moving on to the photos for each phone, I didn't notice a ton of difference here, except for when it came to the 0 0.05 or 0.5 version of the zoom out feature for the photo. Um, normally in the iPhone 11, I found that I would get the photos and they'd be very blurry, but on the new phones, you'll find that it is a lot more crisp and clear and you're getting really those sharp images and it looks a lot more defined instead of a blurry photo. That was something that I definitely loved to see. And then again, you also still get your normal photo settings that you've had before, like being able to zoom out as a little selfie so you can include more into it and those typical features that you have on those phones. Overall, I did notice a bit of a slight increase in quality when it came to those photos compared to the new phone versus the older phone. I personally noticed a big difference between the portrait mode for selfies from the old phone to the new phone. They definitely have done a better job at, again, really working on those outside linings between the edge of the subject and the background as well. It looks a lot more crisp. It looks a lot more high quality. And I just think it looks like an app camera took it versus like a phone. Overall, I am really pleased with how my new iPhone turned out. As mentioned before, I'll link the accessories that I mentioned earlier in this video down below in the comments section. I would love to hear y'all's feedback in the comments. Let me know, are you planning on buying the new iPhone 13 Pro Max or are you planning on saving your money and staying with an older version of a phone or even upgrading to the iPhone Pro Max 11 or 12? Let me know down below in the comments. I cannot wait to hear back from you guys. Right here on the screen, I'm gonna link for you guys another video I think you'll want to go and watch next as well as my subscribe button so you can stick around on my channel for more videos. I will be uploading a what's on my iPhone 13 Pro Max video next so make sure you stick around for that. And without further ado that brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in my next one. Bye guys!